Um, so in this article, we'll learn about the concept of image of responsive images, uh, images that will work well on devices with widely differing screen sizes, resolution, and other such features. And look at what tools HTML provides to help implement them. So responsive images are just one part of responsive web design, a future CSS topic for you to learn. Sweet. Um, why responsive images? So let's examine an example scenario. A typical website may contain a header image and some content image below the header. The header will likely span the whole width of the header. Sorry, the header image will likely span the whole width of the header and the content image will fit somewhere inside the content column. Here's a simple example, okay? So the website works well on widescreen devices such as a laptop or desktop. As you can see, the example live demo. Okay, it works pretty well, I guess. Um, the body content has been set to a maximum of 1,200 pixels in viewports above. So in viewports above that width, the body remains 1,200 pixels and centers itself in the available space. In viewports below that width, the body will stay at 100% of the width of the viewports. So the header image has been set so that it's always, so that its center always stays in the center of the header no matter what width the header is set at. If the site is being viewed on a narrower screen, the important details in the center of the image, the people can still be seen, and the excess is lost, is lost off either side. It is 200 pixels high. The content images have been set so that the body elements become smaller than the image. The image starts to shrink down so that they will always stay in the center rather than overflowing it. Mm. However, issues arise when you start to view the site on a narrow screen device. The header looks okay, but it's starting to take up a lot of, sc of uh, screen height for the mobile device. At this size, it is difficult to see the people within the first content image. Okay. An improvement would be to display a crop version of the image which displays the important detail of the image when the site is viewed on a narrow screen. A second crop image could be displayed for medium width devices like a tablet. This is commonly known as the art direction problem. In addition, there is no need to embed such large image on a page as if it's being viewed on a tiny mobile screen. This is called the resolution switching problem. A roster image is a set number of pixels wide and a set number of pixels tall. As we uh, saw when we looked at vector graphics, a smaller roster image starts to look grainy, and if it's displayed larger than the original, um, yeah, it starts to look grainy if it's displayed larger than the original size. Inversely, it is unnecessary to display a larger Im a large image on a screen significantly smaller than the size it was meant for. Doing so can waste bandwidth. In particular, mobile users don't want to waste bandwidth by downloading a large image intended for a desktop. And a small image would be would do this for their device. An ideal situation would be to have multiple resolutions available and serve the appropriate size depending on the devices accessing the data on the website. To make things more complicated, some devices have higher resolution screens that need larger images than you might expect them to need. To display nicely, this is essentially the same problem but a slightly different context. You might think that vector images would solve these problems, and they do to a certain degree. They are both small in file sizes and scale well, and you should use them whenever possible. They aren't suitable for all image types, however. While they are great for simple, for simple graphics, uh, patterns, interface elements, etc., they start to get very complex to create a vector image based on uh, with the kind of detail that you'd say in a, that you find in a photo. Roster image formats such as JPEG are more suited to this kind of images as we see in the example above. This kind of problem didn't exist when the, when the web first existed in the early to mid 90s. Back then, the only device in existence to browse the web was desktop and, and laptops. So uh, browser engineers and spec writers didn't even think to implement solutions. 
with font of image technologies were implemented recently to solve the problems indica indicated above by letting you uh, offer the browser several image files, either all showing the same thing but containing different number of pixels or different images suitable for different space allocations. Oh, yes. okay, true. All right. <clears throat> How do you create responsive images? In this section, we'll look at the two problems illustrated above and show how to solve them using HTML's responsive image features. You should note that we will be focusing on the HTML images, uh, image tags for this section. As seen in the content area of the example above, the image in the site header is only for decoration and therefore implemented using CSS background images. CSS arguably, arguably has better tools for responsive design than HTML, and we'll talk about those in a future CSS module. Resolution switching, different sizes. So what is the problem that we want to solve with resolution switching? We want to display identical image content, just a larger or smaller depending on the device. This is the situation we have with the second content image on, in our example. The standard image tag element uh, traditionally only lets you point the browser to a single source, source file. Um, we, can use how, we can however use two new attributes, source set and sizes, to provide several additional source images along with hints to help the browser pick the right one. You, you can see an example of this in our responsive.html example on GitHub. Okay. Uh, take the tab. Make it a small window. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, so this source set declares just all the different widths, I guess you want. Mm, I see. Sizes, max width. So in the source set, it tells the browser what, um, how big the images are. And then in the sizes, it tries to downscale, I guess. So source set, um, I leave Alva Ferry JPEG. Yeah, that part, part after is just saying, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, the source set and sizes attributes look complicated, but they're not that bad to understand if you format them as shown above with a different part of the attribute value on each line. Each value contains a comma separated list, and each part of the list is made up of three subparts. Uh, let's run through the contents of each now. Source set defines the set of images we will, now, we will allow the browser to choose between and what size each Im image is. Uh, before each comma, we write an image file name, a space, and then the inherent width in pixels of the image. Note that this uses the W unit, not P PX, as you might expect. This is the image image's real size, which can be found by inspecting the Im image file on your computer. OK. Um, sizes defines a set of, wait, I wonder why they don't use PX. Because W and PX, I guess, are pretty much the same. I have no idea. <laughs> That's weird. Um, sizes defines a set of media conditions and indicates what image size would be best to choose when certain media conditions are true. These are the hints we talked about earlier. 
In this case, before each comma, we write a media condition, max width 480 uh, pixels. You'll learn more about these in CSS topic. But for now, let's just say that the media condition describes the possible state that the screen can be in. In this case, we are, say we are saying when the viewport width is 480 pixels or less. A space and the width of the slot the image will fit when the media condition is true. Okay. Wait, wait, hold up. So a media condition. Um, media condition is a possible state that the screen can be in. Yeah. In place, and then the width of the slot the image will fit will fill when the media condition is true. Yeah. So if the the image or the viewport is say 500 pixels wide or less, mm -hmm. it will scale down the image to 350 pixels or something. I don't know. So then how does it know which image to choose? Um, are hmm. these numbers referring to... Is there a link to... Hmm. Good point. So I think it tries to fit the largest image inside of the viewport. And if it can't, it scales down. And since you declared earlier the sizes of the image, it just choose, chooses the uh, smaller ones then. So if the viewport is 320 pixels, it tries to fit the image in a spot that's 280 pixels? But then which one would it choose? Well, I would choose the smallest one, so 320. It'll it'll um, overflow a bit, but you're trying to save bandwidth, I guess, by doing this. And yeah. Okay. I don't know. We'll figure it out later. Um, for the slot width, you may provide an absolute length, pixels or EM, or length relative to the viewport, but not percentages. You may have noticed that the last slot width has no media condition. This is the default that is chosen when none of the media conditions are true. The browser ignores everything after the first matching condition, so be careful how you order the media conditions. Okay, so it's whichever is first. Mm -hmm. I'll choose that one. Um, so with these attributes in place, the browser will look at its device, device width, work out which media condition in the sizes list is the first one to be true, look at the slot size given to that media query, uh, load the image reference in the source set list that most closely matches the chosen slot size. Mm. And that's it. So at this point, if a supporting browser with a viewport of 480 pixels loads the page, the max width 480 pixels media condition will be true. Therefore, the 440 pixel slot will be chosen. So the Alpha Fairy 480W JPEG will be loaded, as its inherent width 480 is the closest to 4, 440. Mm -hmm. uh, the 800 pixel picture is 128 kilobytes on a, on disk where the 480 pixel version is only 63 kilobytes saving 65 kilobytes now imagine if this was a page that had many pictures on it using this technique could save mobile users a lot of bandwidth older browsers that don't support these features will just ignore them and go ahead and load the image reference in the source attribute as normal in the head of the document, you'll find the line meta name viewport content with device, device width. This forces mobile browsers to adopt the real viewport width for loading view pages, uh, loading web pages. Um, some br mobile browsers lie about their viewport width and instead load pages at a larger viewport width and trick the loaded pages page down 
which is not very useful for responsive images or design. We'll teach you more about this in a future module. Okay. All right. Um, useful developer tools. There are some useful developer tools in the browsers to help with working out the necessary slot width, et cetera, that you need to use. When I was working them out, I first loaded up the non-responsive version of my example, non-responsive.html, then went into responsive view, uh, tools, tools, web dev, responsive design view. Mm. Web dev. Oh yeah, I see that. Control shift M. Oh. That's useful. Wait, hold up, give me a second. It like, I don't know how to describe this. <laughs> Do you have it in uh, Chrome? Mm-hmm. Uh, where do we go? There's some useful developer tools. Tools, web dev, responsive design view. Responsive design view, tools, web developer. What are the tools? Go to that drop down menu. This one? Yeah. More tools. Um, developer tools. Um, and then, try clicking. I'm going to just look it up, actually. <laughs> Might be easy. Chrome. Tools. Responsive design view. Do you see the icon that's like a little phone and a tablet? Click on that. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's very useful. And then this is the responsive one. Can't you just do it like this? Yeah. I just didn't know where it was exactly. Yeah, and then like you can change the, the width and stuff to see how your code re would react to that, different sizes. That's cool. Yeah, okay. Um, I set the viewport with 320, then 480p, px for each, for each one. I went into the DOM inspector, clicked on the image element we are interested, and looked at its size in the box model view tab on the right side of the display. This should, this should give you the inherent image widths you need. Okay, tells you the exact dimensions. Um, Next, you can check whether the source set is working by setting the viewport width to what you want. Set it to a narrow width, for example. Opening the network inspector, then reloading the page. Okay, this should give you a list of assets that were downloaded to make up the web page. And here you can check which image file was chosen for download. Uh, when, in, when testing in Chrome, disable the cache when DevTools is open by checking the box under Setting Preferences Network. Otherwise, Chrome will favor cached images over better fitting ones. Okay. I feel like leaving that on is better, though, because it uh, makes stuff load faster if you leave this. Tools Web Dev. Um, Network. Oh yeah, 
There's in loads of files that, that it downloads. Really? I'm only getting like four. Well, I went to Reddit, so. Oh, true. Yeah. <laughs> also, when you refresh, I'm, I'm thinking that it doesn't download anything new. It just goes to your cached images for Chrome. Uh, resolution switching. Same size, different resolutions. If you're supporting multiple display resolutions, but everyone sees your image at the same real-world size on the screen, you can allow the browser to choose an appropriate resolution image by, by using source set with extra descriptors and without sizes. Somewhat easier syntax. You can find an example of what this looks like in the source set resolutions.html. Mm, okay. In this example, the following CSS is applied to the image so it will have a width of 320 pixels on the screen, also called CSS pixels. Uh, image and width 320. In this case, sizes is not needed. The browser simply works out what resolution the display is at. It is that it is being shown on and serves the most appropriate image reference in the source source set. So if the device accessing the page has a standard low resolution display with one device pixel representing each CSS pixel, the Elva Fairy 320W JPEG image will be loaded. The 1x is implied, so you don't need to include it. The device has a high resolution of two device pixels per CSS pixel or more. The uh, 640W JPEG will, image will be loaded. Okay. Uh, 640PX, okay. Art direction. To recap, the art direction problem involves wanting to change the image displayed to suit different image display sizes. For example, if a large landscape shot with a person in the middle is shown on a uh, website when viewed on a desktop browser, then shrunk down where the website is viewed on a mobile browser, it will look bad as the person will be really tiny and hard to see. It will probably be better to show a smaller portrait image on the mo on mobile, which shows the person zoomed in. The picture element allows us to implement just this kind of solution. Uh, returning to our original not responsive HTML example, we have an image that badly needs art direction. Uh, okay. Chris standing up, holding his daughter Alpha. Let's fix this with picture. Like video and audio, the picture element is a wrapping a wrapper containing several source elements that provides several different sources for the browser to choose between followed by the all-important image element. Um, the code in our responsive HTML looks like so. Okay, so it's in a picture. Mm -hmm. um, the source elements include a media attribute that contains a media condition. As with the first uh, source set example, these conditions are test set to decide which image is shown. The first one that returns true will be displayed. In this case, if the viewport width is 799 pixels wide or less, the first source element's image will be displayed. If the viewport width is 800 pixels or more, it will be the second one. Mm. Okay. The source set attributes contain the path to the image to display. Note that just as we saw with image above, source can take a source set attribute with multiple images reference and a size is attribute too. So you could offer multiple images via a picture element, but then also have but then also offer multiple resolutions of each one. Realistically, you probably won't want to do this kind of thing very often. In all cases, you must provide an image element with source and alt right before the closing picture tag. Otherwise, no images will appear. This provides a default case that will apply when none of the media conditions return true. You can actually remove the second source element in this example. 
uh, and a fallback for browsers that don't support the picture element. Okay. Uh, this code allows us to display a suitable image on both widescreen and narrow screen de devices as shown below. So yeah, the second one is just a crop version. Mm -hmm. You should use the media attribute only in art direction scenarios. When you do use media, don't also offer media conditions within the sizes attribute. Um, okay. So why can't we just do this using CSS or JavaScript? When the browser starts to load a page, it starts to download any images before the main parser has started to load and interpret the page's CSS and JavaScript. This is a useful technique, which on average has shaved 20% off paid load times. However, it's not helpful for responsive images. Uh, however, it is not helpful for responsive images, hence the need to implement solutions like SRC set. You couldn't, for example, load the IMG element and then detect the viewport uh, and then detect the viewport width with JavaScript and dynamically change the source image to a smaller one if desired. By then, the original image would have already been loaded and you would load the small image as well, which is even worse in responsive imaging terms. Uh, use modern imaging formats boldly. There are several exciting new image formats such as WebP and JPEG 2000 that can maintain a low file size and high quality at the same time. However, browser support is spotty. Picture lets us continue catering to older browsers. You can supply MyMe type inside type attribute so the browser can immediately reject unsupported file types. So type web, oh I see. Hmm. Do not use the media attributes unless you also need art direction. In a source element, you can only refer to images of the type declared in type. As before, you're welcome to use comma separating list with S with source set and sizes as needed. For this active learning, we're expecting you to be brave and go at it alone. Mostly we want you to implement your own suitable art directed narrow screen, wide screen shot using picture and a resolution switching example that uses SRC set. Write some HTML to contain your code. Uh, use not responsive as a starting point if you'd like. Find a nice widescreen landscape image with some kind of detail in it. Uh, somewhere create a web size version of it using a graphics editor. And I can't read that. And then crop it to show a smaller part that zooms in on detail and create a second image about 800 pixels wide is good for this. Use picture elements to implement the art direction picture switcher. Create multiple image files on different sizes, each showing the same picture. Use source set size to create a resolution switcher. Example, either to serve the same size image at different resolutions or different image sizes at different viewport widths. True. Um, Let's Google some landscape. Right. Sure. This looks nice.
So let's just get the photo in there. So what type of photo is that? JPEG. You know.
going to turn this into a JPEG. Oh, true. I reckon I did it with photos.
first, right? We got any years to work. Oh, you're just not loading the image. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, the extensions are dot jpeg without the e i think because mine are like that and they well, i don't know if it matters but You've got the wrong file extension. I'm stupid. For some reason, mine is not cropping.
Yo, are you getting this? Hmm? What'd you say? So we'd use the image tag for resolution switching. So the identical image content, just larger or smaller. Picture is more supported mm -hmm. by older browsers. I guess. Okay, uh, and he wanted us to push it to the OSD. Yeah, the repository. Yeah. I'll just make a new repository, I guess. Uh, I feel it. Like just make a new repository and name it the, uh, I don't know, HTML. HTML assessments. Yeah, HTML assessments. And then, and then just add me into the... Branch. Add me yeah. Okay. And we'll just put our names on each file so we can just push it all to the master. Um, or, yeah, push it either that or each folder. We can just put our name on it. And then we can push it into our own folders. We'll just make our own branches and put, put our names on the branches and then push it to the branch. Yeah, no, we're stupid. Because yeah, then we don't have to rename all the folders. I guess there's only two to re rename it. Uh, hmm.
What the hell? Fail to push some refs to the link. Why is master does not exist? Okay. I'm having trouble setting up the repository. Git remote add origin. Remote origin already exists. Okay. Get push origin master. 
Source, respect, master did not match any. What the fuck? Did you get the um, cropping to work? Yeah. With the other tag? Okay. The picture one works better. Oh, okay. Maybe it wasn't supported by Chrome or something. I don't know. Yeah, so when oh. the web page is smaller, use this one. Yeah. When the web page is bigger, use the bigger one. I'll have to review this later because there's still so much I don't understand. Yep. Okay. Would you mind helping me pushing this to the repository? Uh, what do you, can I see your screen? Um, you gotta stop sharing and then I can. Oh, um, there, hold up for a sec. <laughs> 